Hello, my friends. Today I'm going to share a navigation tool. I call it tree navigation. And I'm sure you've heard of this principle before, but I'm going to refine it a little bit and teach you how to make it intuitive. The basic idea is lining up trees, but there's a certain way to go about this so that we can start to train our minds to note straightness of trees. Because in principle, it sounds fine. I'm just going to line up trees and I'll be able to travel in a straight line. In reality, unless we train ourselves into it, we always end up curving off one way or another, often snaking around a lot. You're going to need a compass and a straight stick to teach this to yourself. And I am going to show you this with sticks in the ground because it's actually going to be easier to illustrate than trying to do it in real life with trees. All right, to teach yourself this, you're going to need you. Here's you. And that's your face, the white part, and turn around, that's the back of your head. Rebecca's going to play with my dolls here, so we can show you this. And she also has a long stick, <laughs> straight, and a compass. That's what you're going to need. You, a straight stick, and a compass. You can do this with any bearing, but to make it easier on yourself, start with something like north. And you're going to choose a tree as your start tree. And what you're going to do is you're going to get a north bearing with your compass. Perfect. And then you're going to try to sight another tree. You might have to step a little bit to the side. You can even walk around the front of that tree if you want to. And try to get another sighting on a tree that's straight to the north. And there you see one that's straight to the north. Now what you're going to do is you're going to walk to that tree. Boom, ba -doom, ba -doom. You're going to walk around that tree to the northern side of it. And you're going to walk out about 10 feet from that tree. And then you're going to turn around. What we want to do is line up so that tree number one back there visually disappears behind tree number two from where you're standing. This is going to mean that you have a pretty straight line between you, tree two, and tree one. Once tree one has disappeared behind tree two, you're going to take your straight stick and line it up between where you're standing and tree number two. Now step back to tree number two leaving your stick there, and sight down that stick to the next tree to the north. Once you've got that, you're going to take all your equipment and you're going to walk to tree number three. Don't look at your compass, though. Here's where we train ourselves in. Now, again, without looking at the compass, I'm going to step 10 feet past tree number three. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to line up so visually I cannot see tree number two. In an ideal world, you might even be able to make tree number one disappear. Now again, lay down your stick between you and tree three. Get out your compass. Get out your compass. Now you're going to test yourself. You're going to line up your compass, holding it and looking down at that stick, and see if that stick is aligned true to north. Often you're going to be a little bit off. Yeah, that happens, and that's perfectly okay. Because remember, you're training yourself into this, so give yourself time. But if you followed these instructions, you're probably going to be pretty close to it. Next step in the training, you're going to put your compass away. You're going to step back towards that other tree. Sight down your north line. You're going to choose another tree. And this time, you're going to choose a challenge for yourself. A good, a good number to start with is maybe two trees or three trees. And you're going to try to repeat this process for those two or three trees without checking the compass. And on that last tree, you're going to lay your stick down, get out your compass, and see if you're true to north. Again, you can do this intuitively if you want, 
But if you follow those instructions, you're going to start to train your brain. What happens for most people is that I'm going to be at tree one, I go to tree two, if I don't use that stick to line up, I'm going to look backwards, I'm going to make that first tree disappear, and then I'm going to, uh, I can turn a lot there. It's going to be really hard to get that feeling of what is straight. But if you keep practicing with that stick, and you keep checking yourself with your compass, you're going to start to get it. It's going to become pretty innate over time. And eventually, this allows you to navigate through a forest or, as you can imagine, almost any other environment that has landmarks. And you're going to be able to navigate without a compass and go straight. You may not know what direction you're going, but at least you'll be going straight. And that's going to keep you from doing that famous walking in circles that gets so many people in trouble. A couple of tips and tricks. As you might have figured out already, the further your landmarks are apart, the less margin for error. But this is really tricky because it's not that easy to make your objects disappear or to remember which object was which, especially if you're in a dense forest. So sometimes your objects, your trees, are going to have to be pretty close together. But as much as you can, spreading them out as long as you're not going to lose sight of that last one. Tip number two, this begins to develop an awareness in us, an awareness of nature. If you've been out in the woods a lot and you go out into the woods with somebody who's really never been in the woods, you'll notice that all the plants look the same, all the trees look the same. There's not much differentiation. As we become more nature literate, then we start to see more and more differentiation. And this trains us pretty deeply into that skill. We take a tree like red pines. We have a lot of them here and they can really look the same, one red pine from another. If you're in a stand of red pines, how are you going to remember which one was which? This starts to train you into looking at a tree and not just seeing a tree, but noticing branches that come out, noticing a slight curve in the bark, noticing a rock that's next to that tree, other distinguishing features that make that tree unique. Remember though, that you're looking at one side of the tree to pick it, and then when you're going to look back at that tree, you're looking at the other side. So as we always should when we're out in nature, Remembering to turn around and look at things from the other direction because it may look like very unfamiliar terrain if you haven't taken the time to keep that 360 vision around you. The last little tip is that this can start to train us in drawing lines sort of intuitively through the woods. If you go out 10, 15 trees, then Try to trace your way back and see if you can remember all those trees. You may be surprised to find that if you noted each one as an individual, it's very, very easy to remember your way back exactly. This starts to train us into walking through the woods and I'm going to start to notice landmarks, find their individuality, and then it gets a lot tougher to get lost because as you're walking through the woods, you have, these, you have this line of landmarks that are very intimate and familiar to you. Eventually, of course, you can do this without that compass. That's the meaning of this, but it's always good to carry that compass with you. Here, you've forgotten your compass, you've lost your compass, it got broken. You should be able to trace a straight line and get yourself out of the woods or into the woods if that's more of what you're going for. So thank you, my friends. Tell me about your tree navigation skills, what you've done in the past, tips or tricks to go in a straight line through the woods. All right, love to you all. Can't wait to see what you have to say in the comments.